Okay, so today we're going to work on how to write the body paragraphs for our research papers. Before you begin, you need to make sure that you have already finished selecting all of your sources and have those readily available so that you can easily access them while you write the body paragraphs, as well as an outline of your whole paper, including the opening and closing paragraphs. If you haven't finished these two things, please pause here and go finish them before moving on with your body paragraphs. So the first thing we're gonna do is start with the topic sentence. We should already have most of our topic sentences created. However, you are welcome to revise those as needed to fit with the details that you add into the paragraph. That being said, if you're struggling with the first sentence of each paragraph, please go back to our topic sentence slideshow and review that because we're not gonna cover those further in this slideshow. The first thing you need to do is show how this paragraph is relevant. So if, and only if, you need to add more detail to help the reader connect this paragraph to the thesis sentence. That's the last sentence of your introduction paragraph. You can add an additional sentence or two explaining how the details in this paragraph are going to support your overall argument or your thesis. In the case of your civil rights activist paper, it's going to be how they had a lasting impact on the world. So, an example of a topic sentence that needs a little bit more would look like this. Although the Braille system gained immediate popularity with the blind students at the Institute of Paris, it had to gain acceptance among the cited before adopting it throughout France. So, we know here what the paragraph is going to be about. However, we don't see how this connects to the overall idea or thesis of the paper itself. So, it needs some additional clarification to show how it connects to the thesis because this topic sentence was functioning primarily as a tr transition between paragraphs. So the reader is not going to completely understand how it connects. So the thesis of this overall paper down here says, Braille not only provided practical benefits, but also helped change the cultural status of blindness. So in order to add that clarification, we're going to keep this topic sentence and change it to say, although the Braille system gained immediate popularity with the blind students in the Institute of Paris, it had to gain acceptance among the cited before it, its adoption throughout France, and then continue adding this sentence to add relevance to the thesis. This support was necessary because the cited teachers and leaders had ultimate control over the propagation of Braille resources. So this shows the reader how the popularity of Braille was both practical and why it was needed to help change the societal status of blind people, which is the thesis of this overall paper. If your topic sentence is clearly connected to the thesis, you can skip the clarification sentence. That is only if the reader can't tell immediately how your paragraph is going to connect to the overall paper itself. You may need it for some paragraphs, but not for others. Just use it when you need it, but remember that you don't need it all the time. Next, after you have established whether or not your topic sentence is clearly connected to the thesis, you're gonna add some evidence or examples to your paper. So what details do you want the reader to know about this topic? First thing you're gonna do is look at your outline. You've already decided some of the details you wanna include there. Form these examples into sentences that connect to the topic sentence. This is where you're going to want to go back and look at the resources that you found. Remember, when you find facts in your resources, you want to bring them into the paragraphs, but keep them in your own words. If a detail doesn't connect to the topic sentence, rephrase it so that it does. You can move it to a section where it will support the topic sentence or eliminate it but you should be able to go through and easily connect every single detail to that topic sentence. If you can't, move it somewhere else or get rid of it. Citations. Now, any time that you add a statement of fact that you got from one of your sources, you need to cite that source with an in-text citation. We've practiced these a little bit when we learned the MLA um, guide. We did the MLA um, escape room, so you guys might remember that. So, after writing the fact, even if it is in your own words, you need to add a citation with the last name of the author who you learned that fact from, 
or a lot of websites won't have authors available, use the keywords from the title of the article where you learned it along with the year it was published. So some examples here would be, if I got the fact, uh, a fact from Abraham Lincoln that was published in 1775, my citation would be his last name, Lincoln, and the year 1775. Be sure to put it in parentheses with a period after the parentheses. A period does not go before the parentheses. You consider this part of your sentence. Another example, if I got a fact from a news article without an author titled In the Hen House that was published in 2020, my citation would be Hen House 2020. See how I don't need the full title? I just need the keyword and the year. And then just to point out, I didn't use the whole title, but I would make sure the reader would know exactly which article it came from. But if I did have two articles with similarly titled names, then I would use the full title. So for example, if I was using In the Hen House from 2020 and uh, Around the Hen House in 2020, I would need to put the full title as part of that citation. So after you include those facts, you need to explain to the reader how they are connected or important. So because you have read a ton of information on the subject you're now writing about, because of this, you probably understand your evidence and how it connects to your thesis more clearly than the reader does. So after stating your evidence or examples, you need to explain to the reader why it's important or how it connects to what you've already been talking to. You can even add your own interpretations to the paragraph. Be sure that when you do this, though, you're still not using the words I, me, we, you, etc. In the case of the activist research paper, this might look like showing the connection of the, uh, the, to the impact of their work or their lasting impact overall. So an example of this would look like this. Your evidence statement, this is just the fact that you borrowed from your article, put into your own words. A continually updated average of various social networking traffic ratings, social medias, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and Instagram combined have an estimated 1,560,000 monthly visitors. And that's from eBiz MBA in the year 2014. So when I go to explain this to my reader and show them the importance of it, I would say in the next sentence, the amount of information, even if provided in small doses at a time by social networks, is substantial. These numbers make it evident as to why so many health coaches and health-related businesses have turned to technology as a resource for promotion. So you see here, to us, this just looks like a list of social media sites and how many visitors they have. So while those are good facts to have, we don't necessarily know how they connect to the rest of the paper. So the author then explains why that's important and why it is connected because coaches and health related businesses have turned to technology as a resource for promotion. So we see the connection now. Also, please note this is multiple sentences. That is perfectly fine. Then you're going to repeat that. So you need to include an explanation for every single fact that you include, but keep in mind, you can weave facts together and explain them after you've linked a couple of them. Be sure that you're explaining the relevance and importance of the fact every time in a paragraph. Don't assume that your reader knows anything about this. One tip is that if you have a detailed piece of evidence or a complex explanation, there's nothing wrong with making that one paragraph by itself and then starting a new paragraph for the next set of facts. Then you're just going to wrap it up. You're going to finish each paragraph with a sentence that ties the facts back to the main point, your topic sentence, showing the consequences or impact of the details that you've just explained. So let's take a look at an example. So this is wrapping up a paragraph about a fitness, excuse me, about fitness video games. It is believed that the use of interactive video game technology will prove very useful in the promotion of healthy behaviors and physical activity in people of all ages and places such as rehabilitation centers, fitness centers, hospitals, and physical therapy centers have begun incorporating them into their practices. So what you can see here is that in a paragraph about fitness video games, this ties it back, explaining why it just talked about fitness video games, the benefits of them, and where they're being used. Then 
you want to be sure to include each of these things in all of your body paragraphs. So every single time you start a paragraph that is not your introduction or conclusion, it should have these four things. A topic sentence with a clarification sentence only if it's needed. Evidence or examples with citations. Every fact should have a citation. Explanation of evidence and examples and a conclusion that explains what was learned or what the impact of these facts was. One key thing is to figure out when it's appropriate to start a new paragraph in each of your body paragraphs. You can talk about the same topic in multiple paragraphs, but there's a good way to break it up. So as soon as you address a new idea, argument, or issue, you should start a new paragraph. So for example, if I'm talking about the same topic, but I'm going to introduce a new argument about it, maybe an opposing side or a different idea about it that we hadn't previously discussed, that's appropriate to be a new paragraph. So to determine if your paragraph is complete, ask yourself, do all of your sentences relate to the topic sentence? If you have a sentence, especially towards the end, that doesn't seem to relate to the topic sentence, that probably belongs in the next paragraph. Does each sentence make logical sense in relation to the one before it? So do they connect to each other, one after the other? Do you have enough evidence or examples to demonstrate your point? So sometimes this would mean that you needed to add a sentence or two to make sure that the reader understands how your example connects to the overall thesis. Is it clear what each piece of evidence means and why you have included it? If it doesn't seem clear as to why you've included a piece of evidence, you can either add an explanation or see if you can move it somewhere else where it would make sense more clearly. Does all the evidence fit together to tell a coherent story? This is again going back to the idea that each of the sentences makes logical sense and connects to the one before it and that they all relate to the topic sentence. If anything doesn't quite fit with the topic or the point you are making, it's probably just time to start a new paragraph. So remember, your paragraphs need to work together, so it is okay to continue a larger idea from one paragraph to the next as long as you include transitions so the reader can easily follow your overall point. So now that we've gone through this, please be sure to review the video if needed, go back and start creating the body paragraphs of your essay using your outline and the resources that you found.